It's time for the opening crack, the sideshow to the D&D show we normally do where we taste and rank some beer. How's it going tonight, Brett? It's great. <laughs> Who's this new guy over here? I was like, you are not Phil. Who are you? I'm not <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Which is sad for me, I suppose. <laughs> well, sad. I mean, bad for him. He's not here. He doesn't get any beer. Yeah. Sorry, Phil. Womp womp. Womp womp. <laughs> so so our, our guest tonight filling in for Philly Boy is uh, the, the brewmaster for Steeple Brewing in Hastings, Nebraska, uh, Damon jensen Heitman. Damon, welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, I think this is going to be fun. Are, are Beer you... has all been provided to me, so... I mean, you can't ask for more than that. I'm generally happy to show up. The, the table the table is strewn with fermented beverages. All has been prepared. <laughs> and we have somebody who actually knows, knows what actually we're about talking beer. about. <laughs> Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> uh, so on that note, uh, let's hop into uh, what we're going to be drinking tonight. Uh, Brett, what do we got? This is one uh, from a, ma- a man. Oh, I oh, uh, boy. overthought oh, it. Man. Oh. A man. A man. A man. A man. Iowa it's coming just, out of Millstream Brewing. It's just this like, hey, there's a man uh, over there. Uh, Okay. The sad thing is, this is like our first double dip brewery. We've said this <laughs> once already. I know, and now I'm <laughs> overthinking it. Amana, Iowa, Millstream Brewing, and it is the Knee High Hefeweizen. What do we think? Was that my, was it, was it my turn? <laughs> just awkward silence. You guys both just, looked at me like no, I was. No, 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 no. That's you know. I, I don't know. I don't know. You know. This is we're off on the right foot here. Uh, so Hefeweizen, Damon, would you give us a little insight on? But before we get into like tasting and yeah. talking about the taste of beer, what what is a what is a Hefeweizen? Hefeweizen generally is a a type of a a vice beer. So this is a German. Um, by origin, a vice beer just means a white beer or just a really light um, beer in terms of color. Uh, Hefeweizen is a wheat beer, so it um, should probably be at least 50% wheat uh, malt in the, in the grain profile. And oftentimes the yeast <laughs> uh, gets left in it. Um, so, uh, and it's a different strain of yeast, um, as well. So that's kind of the, but that's kind of the basics of the, of the profile. All right. Well, if you guys haven't taken a sip yet, I would say go ahead and take a sip. Uh, and then let's, uh, we'll talk a little bit about flavor and, and, uh, smell we're getting here. This is a nice change for us. Like this is a light, a nice light beer that has a lot of flavor to it. I mean, in our defense, we've been doing a lot of pickle beers and very oh, strong so many pickle beers. Oh, you're drinking the weird stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate appreciate the endorsement there. <laughs> but yes. Uh I mean the first thing I get on this is like when you when you take a little smell of it, you do get some banana notes up front. I don't feel like that comes through on the palate so much. I think the clove comes through on the palate somewhat. Uh it's it's a it's a Fairly well balanced beer flavor wise to me though. Yeah, the website describes it as the light banana and clove aroma on this hazy pale hefeweizen welcomes you to the, the welcome welcomes you to spring in Iowa. Wheat in the gist, wheat in the grist leans to a creamy and thick body with a smooth finish. Yeah, I don't know. Like when I think spring in Iowa, I don't really think banana. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's fair. You are from there. It's so. not a thing that it was like, oh, hey, it's a spring. It's time for the banana harvest. <laughs> um, but they make it work. It's, it's... But, yeah. Like, yeah, it, this seems like really very sort of true to style of uh, Hefeweizen. It's got that really distinct flavor that comes pretty much all from the yeast. Um that gives it that sort of clove kind of it tastes kind of peppery to me the the more it lingers on my palate um and it also I should stop saying um <laughs> you're fine it's <laughs> it also, your first time <laughs> no 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 well here first time but here. i speak yeah, publicly fairly frequently <laughs> it also i i noticed a, a change in flavor as it warmed up yes which would it, and i thought actually it tasted better the warmer that it got but yeah, when we first tried it, it was very cold and it almost had like a bite to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was it has like kind of a sharp taste at 
Yeah. At, yeah. When it first was coming out. Now, after it sat for a little bit, really mellowing out. Is it pretty common from your experience that the German style beers typically tend to taste better when they're warmer? Mm, yeah. I mean, it, uh, it certainly could be. I... I just didn't know if it was like, because I mean, when you think of going to Germany and drinking beer, you tend to get warmer beers. And so I just that is curious. certainly a more European thing, mm-hmm. right? That the beer gets served or consumed at a warmer temperature than what a lot of Americans are are used to. So, but yeah, the, certainly with this one, the the warmer it got, the more it. I think Brett, you're spot on. Like the more it kind of smoothed smoothed yeah. out a little bit, and yeah, I liked it more as it as we went along for sure. Uh, so color wise, we talked a little bit about Hefeweizens tend to be light, very light beers. Mm-hmm. I think it certainly fits the bill. Mm-hmm. Um, tonight we actually have some clear glasses at the table. Normally we don't have clear glasses <laughs> at the table, which leads to a little awkwardness when we get to this point. It's like, did somebody <laughs> check when you were pouring it? What was the pour like? Uh, <laughs> uh, but as far as malt on this, uh, being a wheat beer, uh, it doesn't have like an overly strong malt profile. I'm not tasting like toastiness or anything like that in this one. Um, no, none of that. I, I would none of that say. sort of caramel or you know, yeah, no, none of that stuff. It's it's light, it's clean, it's yeah, it's it's uh, it's close to cut. Excuse me, kind of a yeah, that's sort of summer beer, right? And I, and I think uh, in almost a little bit of a preview of our challenge rating later, there's not a lot of distinguishable hop flavor like you don't get a punch of bitterness in there you do taste a little hops in there but not much mm-hmm. uh, and maybe a little bit of yeast flavor but again not much there which makes this just a variable a, a very approachable beer mm-hmm. in a lot of ways yeah most of the hop is just gonna is gonna be largely for aroma actually sure yeah. um it's gonna give you some of that sort of um peppery or kind of aroma right as well i don't uh, know what hops they threw in here but and I don't know if we mentioned this, but this this beer does check in at a 5.7 uh, ABV um, and a 12 on the IBU scale. So the IBU certainly makes sense because there's not a lot. A 12? There. I know. I feel like 12 wow. is high, really. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> um, and, I, and I almost feel like the 5.7 feels high because I, I don't – this could be a sneaky beer in a lot of ways to me. Um, and we've had some beers on this show where <laughs> the triple IPA comes to yeah, mind. Yeah, that one comes to mind first, <laughs> first and foremost. Uh, but I, I mean, all around this, this is a, a very, like I said, a very approachable beer and, and, uh, lines up pretty well with your typical have of ice. And so we're, uh, let's move on at this point. Oh, let's, we're moving hold on. on. Oh, no, we're hold not on. moving on. Oh, Before hang on. Before we get there, hang we got to talk about the can. Let's linger. Oh, we do need to talk about the can. Linger. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> let's linger on this, uh, a little kid on the can with a nice big black Angus steer or bowl of some sort. <laughs> Boy, nothing says Iowa and or Nebraska <laughs> than a big old black Angus steer. Yes, like you fit but, you fit the bill. But but again, uh bananas and steers pro- probably not connecting <laughs> to I, I'm not I'm not judging bananas choices and here. Steers. I steers. You know, this is not our first animal on a can. No, we've, we've also had a, had a giraffe. Gy- gyrating giraffe. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes, we have had a gyrating so, giraffe. The just for the record for everybody listening, the steer is not gyrating, <laughs> or it is on well, two legs in any form or fashion. But so, disclaimer: check out that episode. Just learn more <laughs> yeah, about the gyrating giraffe. Check that episode out. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now, now let's. Say, no, I oh no. no okay. No, it. we're not moving on. <laughs> okay. What do you got? So, half of ice and also a, a style of beer that a lot will oftentimes get served with an orange. Wedge, sure, yep. or some sort of a citrus wedge mm-hmm. as well, uh, which, yeah, I think would work really well for that. Come on, Ross, where's our oranges? I, you know, I have there's some tangerine, there's the some tangerines up in the fridge. In the <laughs> <laughs> you missed the bell. I'm sorry, my bad. I apologize. Yeah. Okay. I didn't necessarily mean to call you out <laughs> on that, but I'm glad that. Well, somebody's got to do it, so it (laughs) might as well be Brett to start. But you, shady wise, did it. Saying like that little bit of citrus, I think would really would go. It fit well with the banana. Mm -hmm. I I think it would play really well with that. Actually, would it overpower the banana? I don't feel like typically there's not enough orange in that slice that it overpowers the beer. It's more like accentuates what's in the beer, brightens it. Yeah, in a lot of ways. 
So okay, okay. Have so, you guys said your piece? Are we okay to move on now? I want to like triple check before we move on. Can we? Can we? Can we can Where we are we going after this? I reserve the right to go back, but that's <laughs> fine. Okay, let's let's move uh, into uh, let's bring the D and D back into this uh, because after all, this is part of a bigger D and D world that we live in. Uh, Brett, you're starting us off tonight. Where are we finding this beer? What br- what beer? What pub? What do you got? So we are going to the bustling town of Burdusk. 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 Man, I can't pick words tonight. Uh, Burdusk, and we are going to the Grumbling Griffin. Ooh. which um, the local bartender, beer tender uh, at the Grumbling Griffin is named Pip Moswick. He's a gnome that gave up smoking. Pip Moswick <laughs> gave Pip up smoking? Gave, he gave up smoking. <laughs> Why? He, he, he would love a nice fat cigar, a nice fat stogie. Mm. And mm-hmm. he gave it up. Mm-hmm. So he... This was like, like on doctor's recommendation, he... Is he welcomed a child into the world? Uh, Why did he, he give it up? That, he was getting that cough. Okay. Yeah. He was getting a smoker's cough. So he gave up smoking the stogies uh, and instead went to into brewing beer. But he still wanted a little bit of that, that, that flavor. <laughs> yeah. So he made a clove beer named the Second Wind Wheat. Ooh, okay. Second, okay, sure. So it's it's giving him a second, second wind in life. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Damon, do you, do you want to go next? Do you, Am I going next? You, do you, if oh, you feel you like I, I can do it first, if you like, I I don't care. You you know, let's go. Let's, okay. let's see what you got. Sure. Let's Throw go. Okay. To the uh, so I I don't know any of the towns. <clears throat> it's fine. So I'm going to describe to you the town where I think that this pub is located. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, first of all, it's a it's a it's a it's a river town. Okay. 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 If there is a D and D equivalent of Pittsburgh, <laughs> uh oh! <laughs> Shout out to our fans in Pittsburgh. <laughs> it's, it's that. It has that kind of an ethos. This town, right? Okay. It's it's on the river. There's mill work being done. Uh, okay. They're you know grinding flour or you know whatever sure, you do. Anything in a, you grind in in yeah, a mill, yeah. right? Yeah. Or they're cutting lumber, I suppose. Do they have saws? Oh yeah, they got saws. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's that sort of a blue collar kind of a kind of a town, not Daggerwood, um, Daggerford. That's what exactly what I was looking at. Daggerford. 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 It's like, a lot smaller than Pittsburgh, but it, it fits the bill. F O R D. Yeah. At the end of it. Yeah. Okay. Dagger. Okay. So we're in Daggerford. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now is this a halfling's dagger or? <laughs> All right. What kind Touché of a dagger? To last week's episode. <laughs> and I'm not even around that much. Uh, it's got to be. It's got to be a halfling because it's only a town of about 300. So it's okay. A small town. Oh, okay. So yeah, that that I like that. That I told fits. You mini Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Really mini that Pittsburgh. <laughs> and the name of the tavern is the Wanderer's Soul. Ooh, I like that. Um, the Wanderer Soul. I didn't know that we were supposed to come up with a name for the, for the <laughs> beer tender. You can if you want. If you so. want to. I, I mean, we can leave it at that, too. I think that's still pretty good for your first run. But the Wanderer Soul, and I think that it's um, I think it's an inn. Oh, sure. You know, where there's a couple of rooms above. Mm-hmm. It's probably the only inn in Daggerford. To be let. Sure, certainly. Right. Okay. So it's the Wanderer Soul, <laughs> and the name of the beer is... Bertha's Kling. Bertha's oh, okay. Kling. Bertha's Kling. Okay, what's the story behind this? <laughs> <Bertha>. <laughs> well, see, that's my what I'm thinking. So when I when I tasted the beer, the the taste sort of hung around, and I got the the longer that it hung around, I got more of that sort of clove, kind of peppery sort of flavor. And I think Bertha is she's just. She's just kind of always. She's the person who's just she has a presence. Always, just kind of hanging around, and just kind of always. She, the person who's always looking for somebody to sort of draw into conversation, whether they really want to or not. (laughs) And and just the sort of person that you, you you really have to extricate yourself from the conversation. Uh, and okay. and be okay with I'm is now it's time for me to just walk away. 
Okay. <laughs> because Bertha's going to be fine. She's going to find somebody else to talk to. Talk to. That's, you don't really need to worry about. She's not going to finish the conversation. <laughs> no, she, you know, she'll, <laughs> when you show up, she'll pick it right back up. It's not, <laughs> not going to miss a, miss a beat. That's not going to be a problem. So uh, the Wanderer's Soul is where you can find this tasty brew okay. known as Bertha's Cling. I love it. That's that's pretty dang good for your first run of this. I love it. Nicely done. Ross, so, so, where are you taking us? So full disclosure before I go, Damon has played D&D with us, so he yeah. is not completely new to this game. No. Uh, he may not have known that Daggerford existed before today, but... Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure we did. He, well, well, you know. <laughs> it's uh, a small town. It just, it just depends. It depends on the night. Uh, I just know that town where... Strahd? Stroud? Strahd. Yeah, Strahd. Yeah, He yeah. was trying to ruin everything. Yeah, Barovia. Was you, were, keep, you were around in Barovia for He was keeping the people down. He was. Not still, still is. Still is. Oh, still? Yeah. No, no, but, I mean, at least nobody. that campaign, we didn't actually you get You guys didn't far, take so, care of that? No, we didn't. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> still working we on it. We need to introduce Strahd to, <laughs> to Bertha. <laughs> Let's just talk his ear out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry about him anymore. How to kill Strahd. Introduce him to Bertha. <laughs> <laughs> Two uh, sessions. So my beer, we're going to travel to the Underhome, which is the dwarven capital of Faerun. Uh, here you will find the dwarven cloud bloom ale at the Iron Beard Bre- Iron Beard Brew Hall. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing is, is the bananas are the high high commodity for them like fights get started when the bananas come in because they have to lock those bad boys down so they send like three or four of the dwarven thugs Wait, down you're saying the people go bananas yes <laughs> the dwarves go bananas over the bananas yes you are absolutely correct do you have a rim shot sound effect i, I, I mean yeah, it, it's called brett yes good job brett thank you <laughs> uh so that's as deep as my, as my story goes um that's all I got for tonight. I mean, <laughs> now, why is it a brew hall? I mean, Damon wins. But. Well, I mean, well, he does win. You're absolutely right. He comes in and shows us up. Uh, why is it a brew hall? I, I mean, I think just feel like the the dwarven culture leads lends itself well to brew halls. Like they gather in the evenings there. There's probably several of these, but this is the one where they they they're locking elbows. Yeah, we're singing songs. And that's where you find this beer. So it's like people show up for this. So singing songs, getting in fights on occasion, things mm-hmm. like that. Over bananas. Do probably. they make it there? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because okay. it's like they go out and they... they now, get, where are the bananas coming from? Oh, from the south of Faerun. This is like up in the north where it's cold. So it's like they have to import bananas. But it's a, it's a tropical zone in the south? More tropical than in the north, okay. for sure. I I mean, enough so that... There's some bananas coming in. Maybe they don't come, I mean, probably way south, but right. at some point, enough to grow some bananas, sure. I would think. Yeah. So. I don't know. They come in know. on a banana cart. <laughs> There's a banana salesman. <laughs> Thank you for that. What's the name of the banana salesman, Ross? I did not come away. Um, Slim. Banana Jack. <laughs> does this cart play a song when it comes in? Absolutely, it does. Can the next thing that you make in GarageBand be... You want to do the banana cart yeah. song? <laughs> I'll get to work on that mental <laughs> note. Banana cart song. Okay. His logo is the banana boat little baby with the sunscreen. <laughs> the Chiquita lady. <laughs> he comes in with a oh, banana yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, gosh. Okay, so let's let's rate this beer. So on a scale of... So the scale that we use on a scale of 1 to 20, uh, 1 being cream ales, your domestics are going to fall into down there as far as like approachability. 20 on the other end is going to be Imperial Stouts, uh, probably like double IPAs, things like that, that are very hoppy and hard for, for non craft beer drinkers to really get into. Where does this one fall on the scale, guys? Mm-hmm. This one's tricky. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give it two numbers. What? Your number I'm gonna, and No, I'm going to give two option? numbers. Okay. Yeah, well, it, it is an option now. So <laughs> We're adjusting the rules on the fly When here. we poured it and it was really cold, mm. I would give that like a 15. Mm. Yeah. After it mellowed out, I would drop it way down to a 7. Because I think okay. the, the bite of a 15, it would uh, shock a lot of non-craft beer drinkers. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After it mellows out, it's a lot more approachable. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it it almost presents as sour. 
right yeah, at the, sure. right, like right at the start. Woo! Here we mm-hmm. go. Yeah, which is yeah, which is a totally different sort of thing. I agree. I also agree that it is kind of a tricky because it's an interesting style. Because if you just saw it in the glass, it's it's <clears throat> it's, it's really light. It's got a little bit of a of a cloud, sort of a haziness, and that's from the wheat that's in it. Um, I would. I think I'd put it at maybe. A, I think I'd put it at. I'm gonna go with nine. Is, really? Okay. Yeah, is my <clears throat> number somewhere pretty close to the middle because that yeast is just a different kind of yeast than someone who's n- who's only going to go for a cream ale or like if they're yeah. going to go craft yeah. beer. Like, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's gonna gonna, that's going to be different enough to make a person think, "Ooh, I'm not so sure about this." Okay, Wait, you, you're, the numbers you guys are giving are, are we're giving, all over the board on yeah, this. Yeah, it's giving me pause a little bit, only because. And hold I, on, hold on, time out. What yes. was your before you go any further? Say yeah. your number. What was your first guess? Uh, my my gut was a six. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, but see, also where where I struggle a little bit is like taking myself out of the equation. Sure. So like trying to imagine myself as somebody just having a craft beer for the first time Mm -hmm. and taking a sip of that. I mean, it's not as low as some of the ones that we've had. Um, I I, I would probably leave it as a six, but I definitely get the high end when it's cold and it does present some sour notes to it. And I get that. Um, High end when it's cold, I'd say 12, six, six after it mellows out. I, I think it's a good beer. I think it's still approachable for somebody that's that wants to get into it. It's not too too overpowering in any way, though. So uh, now that we've kind of established our ranking on this, yay or nay, this is for you, not necessarily for everybody else. Yay, nay on this beer, guys. What does yay mean? Yay means you would drink this again. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> nay means no bueno. <laughs> Damon, where are you coming at? Uh, this is a yay. I think that's that's pretty clear. It's a good one. Me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm going yay as well. And I think this is a good one for somebody to graduate to. Like, if you're just coming into the world of craft beers and you're buying, like, the domestic equivalent to what somebody has, this is a nice maybe one or two steps up to get you into a little bit more unique styles that can still be approachable. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I agree with that. I, it's yay for me too, but I, I like your description there because I think that's a good point. It's like if you get in with like a cream ale or something, you want to experiment a little bit flavor wise. Like it, it's the you can the, push yourself to the it. banana and clove is not a normal beer flavor per se. So it's like you have to go out of your comfort zone a little bit to try this. And I, I think it's a good one to try. It's a nice next step. Mm-hmm. All right, Brett, if uh, anybody wants to find the Nehi Hefeweizen, how would they go about doing that and finding more information? You can find them at millstreambrewing.com or on all sorts of social media. Uh, look out for it hitting shelves soon. It is a brand new release for this spring. Uh, it's a good one. Check it out. Yeah, and shout out to Millstream for being our first double dip brewery. They were on a while back and now uh, back with another Covered beer. Back so, more. yeah, hopefully we taste some more Iowa beer in the future. And also, thank you to Damon for joining us tonight on loan, if you will, uh, to use some soccer vernacular uh, from <laughs> Steeple Brewery. Hey, I've been paying attention to Arstel lately, so you're on loan from Steeple yeah. for some podcasting, I'm right? I'm curious to know what my loan fee was. Uh, <laughs> Well, a beer, free beer, <laughs> more free beer. Wow. How about that? I need a new agent. <laughs> you can talk to your boss. That's fine. <laughs> okay, that's going to do it for this bonus episode. Uh, stay tuned for more beer reviews in the future. You can check out our regular show, Bards and Barrels, anywhere podcasts can be found. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Bards and Barrels. Until next time, may your dice be hot and your beer be cold.